Picking up from our GitHub glossary lesson, let's now create our first repository from scratch. So we'll start on the homepage. You might have here a large hero unit called GitHub Bootcamp. Doesn't matter if you don't. And here in the top right corner is a prominent new repository button. So we'll click that and we will type the name for repository. First repo sounds pretty nice. Notice that we actually have suggestions, which amazing as they might be, are probably not the best here for our first example. We will also type a first description like this is my first GitHub repo. We will keep it public. Private would require a paid account. Initializing with readme is always a nice idea and we could add as well a default git ignore. This is something that I would advise on. For example, we could just say, hey, I'm using Ruby on Rails. So create Rails aware default git ignore file. There's actually a wonderful way of creating a git ignore that actually takes into account just about every file you would want to ignore, which is the git ignore.io service. This is not something you would use when creating your repo interactively in the GitHub UI, but something you can use to complement your git ignore later. Just type any technology you would use, such as indeed Rails, but also very important IDs and editors. Some of them are like really massive. For example, if I take WebStorm or Visual Studio or even technologies such as Node, it will create like a very comprehensive getting no file. This is the Rails part. This is the WebStorm or generally JetBrains part. Those are pretty huge. Visual Studio's huge ignore list as well, Node as well. It's a great way to make sure you do not forget anything. We'll stick with the default here and we will add a license. You always want to add a license. We'll pick MIT for now. In a later chapter of this course called Being Social and Collaborative, we'll discuss in detail how to help you pick the best license regarding the kind of content you're versioning. Let us click Create Repository. And here it is. That's our first repo. Hey, so if we look at that repository screen, we can see uh, the URL. That's your username and the repo name. Those are links here as well. This is the short description we typed. We can actually change that. We can even provide a website, which would show up as a link. We will discuss all those different parts in a very soon chapter. And you notice that we have our files. We can browse to these files just clicking. Here they are, depending on their syntax. They can be rendered in a useful manner. And that's actually something we see here with the readme.md. You will notice that the readme.md file is actually rendered here as HTML. This is something that GitHub will do automatically on any folder in your repository that contains a readme.md. But that would be syntax highlighted at the very least for most code syntaxes you can think of, be it HTML or JavaScript or JSON. Markdown files and especially readme.md have this special behavior that they are automatically rendered below the file listing. This concludes this very short lesson about creating a GitHub repository from scratch. In the next lesson, we will learn how to fork someone else's repository to start contributing to it.